Hal D. Well, it's been about a week, I think, since I've made a vinyl update. So, um, I'm going to do another one. Uh, I try not to, here lately, I've been trying to not wait any longer than a week between videos. Sometimes I'll post, you know, two or three videos at once. But regardless, I still like to, you know, not wait too long in between videos. So, anywho... Uh, starting off here, we have a new release from, and I've seen a couple people talk about this and show this already. It's the new Striper. I don't think I've showed this yet. Uh, I guess it is out on white vinyl, uh, which I haven't seen yet. But, you know, I wouldn't mind picking it up on white vinyl. I don't have um, any of their real new, new releases on vinyl. Um... There's the picture there. Uh, this one's called Fallen. And I listened to it once so far. And it's, you know, it's it's classic Striper. It's a little bit heavier than their 80s stuff. And I might be saying that just because I'm used to the 80s stuff more. Or maybe because the guitars are a little more clear, more crunchy. Uh, I don't know if it's the uh, amplification they're using, if it's the guitar tones. I'm not, you know, real technical when it comes to that stuff. But, you know, overall it's a good album. It's classic Striper. It's just as good as anything else they've done. So I'll put that over there. And I um, also picked up recently uh, at Barnes & Noble. Uh, this was on my Amazon wish list. And I haven't been checking on there to see when the actual release date was. But I walked in there the other day. And it's already out, so it's called Dust and Grooves. And this is uh, Adventures in Record Collecting. So you can see it's a very thick hardback book. And, uh, I mean, I haven't really got to go through this really thorough yet. But uh, the first half of the book is like, um, it, shows, it shows people and their collections. Like this, for example. Okay, and it has some really great pictures. And then the second half of the uh, second half of the book is in-depth interviews with the collectors. There's Quest Love there. Um, so it's it's very well done, very well put together, very worth it. Uh, this one was fifty dollars, which is full price at um, Barnes and Noble, but it's definitely worth it, at least as far as I'm concerned, it's worth it. Um, so uh, there's that. So if you see that out there, you might want to check it out. On to the vinyl. Uh, this is mainly rock and metal. I mean, it's not uh, strictly metal because I have a little bit of 80s uh, rock thrown in, a little 70s rock. Uh, this is one that I've sort of been wanting for a while. I uh, have this on CD, and I, I have a lot of their 45s, their video collection, etc. In excess, kick. And um, I'm sure they sold a ton of these records because there's like, I think, what, four or five singles from this record. You know, it has uh, New Sensation, Devil Inside, Need You Tonight, uh, Never Tear Us Apart, which was a really good power ballad. Um... There's the label, uh, and then on this side's the custom label. But, uh, you know, I have quite a few NXS albums, and uh, I like all their stuff. It's a shame about Michael Hutchins, though. Uh, and the new CD that came out, or the new version of NXS that came out a few years ago, I guess it was in the 90s now, um, they had the NX, uh, Rockstar NXS TV show to find a new lead singer. I actually liked the album. Switch, I think, is the name of it. And the, the single was Pretty Vegas. I actually liked it. I mean, it, it in a way, sort of sounded like classic um, NXS, but it was sort of a little bit more... I mean, obviously, it's not the same lead singer, so you know it, it can't be identical, but I liked it. Uh, this is one that I, I think I already had, but it was cheap enough. I went ahead and picked it up. Bon Jovi, Slippery When Wet. 
Obviously this is not the band cover, but it's the alternate one. Uh, I've never seen the actual <clears throat> the band cover, the one with the, the girl in the wet t-shirt. Uh, and it says slippery when wet on the t-shirt. You know, they, they thought that that was like, oh God, it's such a big deal back in the 80s. And it's like, not really. So, and of course that, that album, this one has uh, Living on a Prayer, You Give Love a Bad Name, Wanted Dead or Alive. I mean, major breakthrough album for Bon Jovi. Another one I picked up, which I think I already have this too, Def Leppard Pyromania. Um, this is another album that sold tons. This don't have the original sleeve in it, but the record itself is fine. Uh, this has all kinds of uh, singles to photograph. Um, Fool and Rock of Ages were the singles, but Too Late for Love, I remember hearing on the radio quite a bit um, at the time. So, on Classic Rock Radio. This is one that I've seen uh, on reissue. I think Volume 2 is on reissue, too. This is an original here. Creedence Clearwater Revival Chronicle, Volume 1. This is a double album. I have the CD of both volumes, 1 and 2, which Volume 2 is would have been is two albums, too, if I ever see that. Um, these are just plain white sleeves, which I don't know if that was the... the but they really came on, it's on the fantasy label. Um, I like everything pretty much that CCR has done. And this has, this is a good starting point if you're not familiar with CCR. Uh, it has um, Proud Mary on it, um, Down on the Corner, Fortunate Son, Traveling Band, Up Around the Bend, Who Will Stop the Rain. So many good songs. They're all good. So, and I think uh, John Fogarty just celebrated his 70th birthday. Does that sound right? And still making albums, still touring, so you can't beat that. Uh, this is one that Kat picked up a while back, and I we listened to it. It's such a great album, White Snake. This is one of their earlier ones. Uh, this one's Ready and Willing. Ready and Willing. And there's the sleeve. I actually prefer a lot of their early stuff more than their 80s stuff. I mean, their self-titled album with... Um, Still of the Night, and here I go again. I mean, every song on that album is good, don't get me wrong. But all the albums previous to that, from Slide It In backwards, all of those albums are just as good, if not better, in a lot of ways, because they're a different band. And some people joked that they were more of a Deep Purple. You know, it was like, because I think there was two or three members of Deep Purple in that band. So, but if you like Deep Purple, hey. Here's one that... Uh, has, I don't think I'd ever seen it on vinyl other than a reissue, and this is a re, this is the original. Uh, it said as is for two ninety nine. Lou Reed Transformer, and I really didn't see anything wrong with it. You know, uh, a lot of times, and this came from half price books. A lot of times when they say as is, you know, it's just not like a mint condition. But this one is. I mean, there's like a little little tiny scratch there and that's really about it i mean as far as playable wise and the fact that i didn't have it and it's an original i have the cd but you know the vinyl is what i was holding out for and if i hadn't ran across this i probably would have eventually bought the reissue so you know that'll probably satisfy me i mean like i said in one of my previous videos some uh trying to get comfortable here some of my uh some of the bands or some of the albums that i like i have to have the original and the reissue and then others i'm good with one or the other so i don't know we'll find out how that turns out uh this is one that i was looking for the eagles long run and i've seen this forever and ever but uh i hadn't realized um, i mean i have the eagles greatest hits and stuff but i have volume one and two and this song which is those shoes they play on classic rock radio. I actually wasn't on the, uh, those. And I'd heard that song recently, and I, I was thinking, it's like, well, I think, I think that's probably not on the greatest hits. And, you know, I for a while, I guess, I thought it was a Don Henley song. Uh, so I looked on his albums, thinking it was on the same one that Dirty Laundry was on, which I was wrong. So anyway, once I found out 
what album it was on. I had to had to look for it. Uh, but I have downloaded it, put it on my iPod. So this is a Montrose record here that I'd never seen. Jump on it. Uh, I was under the impression that Montrose only did a couple albums, but this makes my one, two, three. I think this is my fourth Montrose album that I have. I guess uh, the first or second Montrose was just an instrumental, I think. Uh, this one I haven't listened to yet, so I'm not sure. This was in the dollar bin of all places, and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, so, there's the back, literally. And there's the front, literally. So, moving on, we have the Ozark Mountain Daredevils. And I'd looked at this album for a while, just because of the cover alone. The picture there is just fantabulous. And then there's the band with the same two guys that was on the front. Um, this is like Southern Rock stuff. Um, I'm not familiar with a lot of the song titles, but I am familiar with some of their songs, so I'm sure I'll like it. It's recorded in Nashville, Tennessee, so what's not to like, you know? Uh, and there's the label, or the uh, label, the sleeve, right there. And there's the other side of the sleeve, right there. It's funny how they put both sides of the sleeve. You know, they put one side of the sleeve on one side, and then they put the other side of the sleeve on the other side. I like how they do that. Uh, this is another one that I'm pretty sure I don't have. Joe Walsh, but seriously, folks, taking him a swim there. And looks like having a snack as well. Um, any any Joe Walsh is good Joe Walsh. You know, so I think this one has Life's Been Good on it. Yes, it does. And, um, hmm, that's the only one that I think was a single. There's a boat on here called Theme from Boat Weirdos, so that's always good. Uh, this is one that I'd seen uh, not too long before I'd seen it to actually get myself. I think I might have seen it on the VC. Um, it's uh, Alice Coltrane and Carlos Santana. And this one's called Illuminations. And I love the artwork. But, you know, Santana, anything... It's not a gatefold. Anything from Santana, you know, how could you not like that anyway, so... And Alice Coltrane, I have one of her other albums. And, you know, that stuff is just awesome within itself. So you put those two together. Can't wait to listen to this. I'm so behind on listening to my vinyl. But that's an ongoing story. Uh, this is one that um, Kat showed recently. Let's see if I can get comfortable again. Uh, I'm sitting in the floor. And there's like records all around me, so I don't have a whole lot of room. I'm trying to get close to the light for the, the camera angle so you can actually see, because a lot of my previous videos have been a little bit too dark. So anyway, this is uh, one that Kat showed recently. It's uh, Santana Lotus. And this is just the regular stereo pressing uh, U.S. version, I'm thinking. And this is one that unfolds like a million times. And I know I can't get all this on camera, but I'm going to try to get as much as possible there. And it unfolds again and again and again. No, and I can't get it all, like I said. But I, th I think it unfolds into a cross, but it might unfold into a... I'm not sure, really. I need to get it out on the table so I can unfold the whole thing and give it a good going over. So anyway, that's Santana Lotus. Uh, we've seen both of these, her copy and mine, the same day at the same record store. And, um, I mean, just like, oh my God, there's that record. So that was a pretty, pretty amazing find. Actually, all of my finds were amazing because... You know, they're vinyl. <clears throat> so, as I get choked up, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and like this video if you uh, feel the need. I appreciate everyone out there for the comments and so on. And uh, all the views and stuff that I get. That's why I keep doing this, because I enjoy it. And I hope you guys out there enjoy it. You know, it's uh, 
it's a nice uh, thing to be able to show your collections to other people that are just as passionate about them. Uh, that's, you know, they're in them for the same reasons, you know. You just can't seem to, you know, I look around me here in, in my record room and I just can't ever seem to get enough. Because I've had people at work um, that I work with, people that don't collect vinyl, you know, it's like, well, how many records do you have? Wasn't that enough? What's too much? And those kinds of questions. And I really don't have an answer for that because I don't think that they're, I don't think that you can get, you know, because you get certain things you want, you know, that's on your wish list. And in the process of always doing that, you run across so much more stuff that you wasn't aware of. I mean, I do that constantly. And then you get into this and you get into that and it's like, oh, I've, so-and-so has this and so-and-so showed this and I've never heard of this band. I need to check them out. So it's just an ongoing thing. You know, I think it, I don't think it ever stops as long as you're passionate about music and collecting and vinyl and, you know, have an open mind about what you like. I don't think it'll ever stop. So keep the videos coming out there. I'll keep making them too. And we'll see you real shortly. I'll be making another video soon.